Imagine you are a power grid designer. You want to connect a number of cities with power lines, such that power can flow from every place to every other place. But of course, your company wants you to be as cheap as possible. So, you want to minimize the total length of the power lines that you place. How would you pick where to build a power line? Welcome back to Complexity Papers. And today, we will see the solution to this problem. This is actually the second part of the lecture. If you haven't seen the first part yet, check it out. Link is in the description. Jindrich Saxel was one of the world's first power grid engineers. And perhaps he was the first person to study this problem back in 1925. Saxel didn't solve it with brute force. Instead, he went to the university here in Brno to talk with mathematician Ottokar Borufka. Borufka came up with an ingenious solution that is now known as Borufka's algorithm. In this lecture, I will show you Kruskal's algorithm. This is a closely related method, but compared to Borufka, it saves me some explanations. How do we even start thinking about a problem like this? Well, note that in this case, the difficulty arises from the combination of two different constraints. First, we have a structural constraint. We want all nodes to be in the same component. And then, we have an optimality constraint. We want the combined length of the links to be minimal. If you have such combinations of structural and optimality constraints, it's good to use a strategy that I call break the hard bits. That is, we first ignore the structural constraint and then slowly bring it back. To see how this looks in action, let's consider again the example of the five Moravian cities that we introduced in part one. What you're looking at here is an empty graph it has five nodes and no links. This hardly looks like an optimal power grid, but in a sense it is. This is actually the optimal network with five components. Yeah, if we wanted to supply all cities, we would need to build five power plants. But if you are okay with five components, this is the best because we don't build any power lines. Now that we have found the optimal network with five components, let's see if we can also find the optimal network with four components. Every network of five nodes that has four components needs exactly one link. So let's use the cheapest one. That is the 51 km one link from Céline to Olomouc. To find the optimal network with three components, we need to place another link. The second cheapest link that we can place in the network is a 63 km long connection between Olomouc and Brno. Are we really sure that this is the optimal network? The answer is yes because every network with three components needs at least two links, and we have chosen the two cheapest ones. If this is too easy, you are in luck, because we now hit a little complication. To find the optimal network with two components, we need to place another link. The next shortest one is a 74 km long connection from Brno to Céline. But if we place this link, it doesn't reduce the number of components. So there's actually no point in building this link. The next shortest one is a 75 km long link from Olomouc to Ostrava. Building this one reduces the number of components to two. But have you really found the optimal network with two components? This is a subtle point, so I need your full attention now. I now want to argue that the link from Brno to Céline cannot be part of any optimal network with any number of components. To do this, let's ask if Brno and Olomouc are already in the same component. Because if they aren't, then it's cheaper to reduce the number of components by placing the Brno olomouc link. So if Brno and Olomouc are not in the same component, we wouldn't need to place the brno Celine link. But what if they are? What if Brno and Olomouc are already in the same component? Well, in that case, we can ask, are Olomouc and Celine also in the same component? Because if they aren't, we rather place Céline Olomouc than Céline Brno. So this leaves us only one case to consider. What if Brno and Olomouc are already in the same component? And also Olomouc and Céline are already in the same component. Well, in that case, there's no point at all in placing the Céline Brno link. Because also Brno and Céline must already be in the same component, right? So, in this procedure, where we consider the links from the cheapest to the most expensive one, whenever we reach a link that doesn't reduce the number of components, it automatically means that this link 
cannot be part of any optimal network for any number of components. This reasoning shows that we now have the optimal network with two components. Every optimal network with two components needs at least three links. And we have used the three cheapest links, except for the one link for which we could show that it cannot be part of any optimal network. Now we only need one more link to reach our final result. The next shortest one is the 76 kilometers from Céline to Ostrova. But again, placing this link doesn't reduce the number of components. So again we can show that this link cannot be part of any optimal network. The next link is the 77 kilometers from Brno to Chilava. And because that link reduces the number of components to one, we definitely build it. So, have you found the optimal network with one component? Of course we have, because every network with one component requires at least four links, and we have placed the four cheapest links possible, except for the two links for which we could show that they cannot be part of any optimal network. We can summarize Kruskal's algorithm as follows. First, we create a set containing all possible links that we could place into the network. Second, we pick the cheapest link from the set and actually remove it from the set. Third, we check if this link, if it were placed in the network, would reduce the number of components. And if it does, we do place it. If it doesn't, we just discard it. Fourth, we check if the number of components is now one. If it is, we are done. If it isn't, we just go back to step two and continue from there. Note that the result of Kruskal's algorithm will always be a tree, that is, a network without cycles. We can call this tree a spanning tree, because it will include every node in the network. This tree isn't just any spanning tree, it's a so-called minimum spanning tree. Out of all spanning trees we could have constructed, this is the one for which the combined length of links is minimal. And this gives us also the name of this general class of problems. They are called minimum spanning tree, or MST problems. Today, power grids are actually designed a little bit differently. We want every place to be connected to the network with at least two independent links. This just prevents that a single line failure disconnects a place from the network. But the minimum spanning tree algorithms still have many important applications particularly in data analysis, where they often appear as an important step in bigger, more complex tasks. Perhaps most importantly, Kruskal's solution provides an example of a greedy algorithm. A greedy algorithm, that is a strategy where you build up a solution step by step, doing whatever seems best at the time. Well, if you use a greedy algorithm for any kind of problem, you will get results very fast. But you cannot always guarantee that these results will be optimal. Now, in our MST's example, we were never really tempted to place a wrong link. Or maybe we were tempted, but when we were tempted to place a link that didn't reduce the number of components, then we realized that it wouldn't get us closer to the result. And so we didn't place it. And this is maybe a nice point to end with. Whether an optimal greedy solution is possible for a problem may depend on how well you understand the problem. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and want to know more, I'm actually just about to finish a book that will be published with Springer. And the link might be already in the description by the time you watch this. So now you could just go on and watch any other video, or you might join me for some exercises and never forget what you just learned. If I put it this way, the choice is obvious, isn't it? The car passed.